In this video I will show you how you can scale a recursion using dimension analysis. You need to know how to calculate pi factors. So please watch my video guide about pi factors first if you have problems cal calculating pi factors. Now let's take a look at the following recursive relation. This here. This equation is also called logistic equation and we want to bring it in a dimensionless form. But first let's explain this equation quickly. NK describes the size of a population, for example animals, at some time k. The expression on the left, so this expression here, is called the gross rate of the population and we have defined this rate at the right side. So this here using a linear function in n. R is some kind of a gross factor and C is called capacity. You can see that if nk, so nk hits this capacity C, the gross rate becomes zero. So if nk hits C, um, this here becomes one and so we have zero here so the whole gross rate becomes zero too. Also we have a starting size of the population which we call n zero. Okay, now we will calculate the pi factors. Let's take a look at the equation to find out which quantities it depends on. We have n which describes a size, we have k which describes a time, we have c uh, which is the capacity and this is also a size, um, we have small n which is the starting size and we have r and r is a dimensionless factor because here on the left we have something that is dimensionless this expression here in the brackets is also dimensionless um, and so r has to be dimensionless too because on both sides of this, uh, of this equation here there must be the same dimension. Ok, here on the left we write the, dim the basic dimensions we need so we have capital S which describes uh, some kind of a size and we have the time capital T and here we write the numbers um, we need for these dimensions here so for capital M, capital N we have one time size zero time for small k we have zero size one time for capital C we have one size zero time for small n the same thing and r as I said before is a dimensionless factor and therefore zero and zero because it doesn't have a dimension now we have this matrix here the rank of this matrix is 2 so let's pick two linear independent columns. We have to pick k. And the second column we pick could be for example c. So we pick the k column and the capital C column. The next step is to write the remaining columns, so the columns with capital N, small n, and R as a linear combination of these two columns here. So let's start with capital N, which is the same column as small n. So this here is capital N, small n. And we will write it as a linear combination 
of these two columns which is pretty easy because this is just one times one zero which is the C column. Okay, the next column we have to write is as a linear combination is this column here, the R column, which is zero zero. And this is also pretty easy because this is just zero times the K column plus zero times the C column. So this here is K, this here is the C column. So and now we can write down the pi factors, so pi 1 um, we will call x so we also give new names to the pi factors and this is n times c to the power of minus 1. The second pi factor is r times k to the power of 0 um, and c to the power of 0 which we will not write down so the second pi factor is just small r because r is already dimensionless and so it's a pi factor um, and the third pi factor pi 3 we will give a new name first we will call it small b and it's n times c to the power of minus 1 okay now we have these three pi factors here and we will use them to scale this recursion here okay let's scale the recursion using this new variable here so we want to know what x k plus 1 is. So this here is n times c to the power of minus 1. So c to the power of minus 1 times n k plus 1 which is just this here. And now we have to insert n k plus 1 nk plus 1 here. So we need to know what nk plus 1 is. Um, but nk plus 1 plus 1 is simply this here. So we have we bring this here on the right side and we bring this here on the right side. So we have nk times r times this bracket here so I will do it like that plus and this express, pre, expression here plus nk ok and now we will use this here here So we insert this here at this place. So we get c to the power of minus 1 times nk times r times the bracket expression minus nk C 
plus NK. So to find out what XK plus 1 is, we have used this here, and then we have inserted the original recursion at this point here to get to this equation here. Okay, now we can calculate this here and get c to the power of minus 1 times nk times r times 1 minus nk times c to the power of minus 1 plus c to the power of minus 1 and k. And now we take a look at this here and that here and here because we already know what these expressions are. These expressions are just x. So here we have xk times r times 1 minus xk plus xk xk so this comes from this relation here so now we have a new recursion, but this time it depends on xk instead of nk. <coughs> NK. Let's write this down again. So we have xk times r plus 1 minus r xk. So I have just written it down again in a little bit different way. And now we bring this expression r plus 1 outside of the bracket. So um, we do it like that. So we have r plus 1 times xk times 1 minus so and here um, we need this here that it's the same so that it is the same expression xk Okay, now we get something that looks like this here. So we have xk plus 1 is equal to this expression here. The next step is a little bit tricky um, because we will multiply both sides of this new equation here with a factor so that we can simplify this equation even further. The factor we need is this one here. So let's take a look at this number here and let's see what happens if we multiply both sides of this equation here, of this relation here, with this factor here. So we multiply both sides with the factor r r plus 1. So if we do this we get r r plus 1 times xk plus 1 
which is the left side here, multiplied with this factor here. And this is equal to r plus 1. Um, the factor and the expression in the bracket. Okay, and now let's take a look at these expressions here. So we have this here, that here, and that here. And we see these things here are the same. So let's define another new variable, which we call um, yk. And let's define it this way. Let's define it as r, r plus 1, xk. So this variable here, yk, is still dimensionless because xk is dimensionless and this factor here is also dimensionless because r is dimensionless so this here doesn't have a dimension and now if we use this new variable yk here we get to yk plus 1 so this is the left side is equal to r plus 1 times yk times 1 minus yk so by defining this new variable yk we can simplify this equation here even further and in the end, we get this here as our new recursion, dimensionless recursion. We can do one last thing. We can call this constant here A. So the equation becomes even simpler. Um, so in the end, we have this recursion. And we also have to think about the starting size about uh, of y k. So we have to find out what y zero is. But y zero is just r r plus one x zero. And x0 is n0 times c to the power of minus 1. Um. And n0 is small n. So this here is small n and small n times capital C to the power of minus 1 is this constant here, the third pi factor. So this we called b. So we get r 
r plus 1 times b and this here is just another dimensionless constant which we can call for example which we can call small m okay this here is our new dimensionless recursion with this starting value here. The last thing we can think about is which values this constant a can attain. If r is positive, so r is larger than 0, which we will assume, then a is larger than 1 because a is defined as r plus 1 and if r is positive then a is larger than 1. Normally, normally you also assume that a is smaller or equal to 4. You have this extra condition because if you start your sequence with a number between 0 and 1, um, the sequence won't leave this interval anymore. So this leads to yk is an element of the interval. 0 and 1 for all k larger than 1. So with this condition here, a is smaller or equal 4. If you start your sequence in the interval 0, 1, the rest of the sequence for all k larger than 1 will be in this interval Two. And this is a nice thing to have because you don't want your sequence to be negative because uh, yk describes some kind of population and the negative population um, doesn't exist. Negative population mean, means um, that all individuals of the population are dead and so it is nice to have uh, that you have a sequence that is between 0 and 1 all the time. Because um, numbers that are larger than 1 would always lead to this expression in the bracket be negative and therefore to a negative uh, population in the next step. It is very likely that you will find this version, so the scaled version of the logistic equation, if you look it up in a book or using the internet. This is because it is a little bit easier than the original version of the logistic equation. So most of the time um, people will use this version of the equation if it comes to calculating fixed points or stationary points just because it is easier to work with the scaled version. I hope this video was helpful and you learned, learned something about the logistic equation and how to scale recursions correctly.